On this week's show, did Lord Alan Sugar really lie about Samuel Leeds? And we're going to be answering your questions all about property. Welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. We are here every Friday at 12 p.m. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an upload. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Enjoy this week's show, and don't forget to share with all of your friends. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. How are you doing, my friend? I'm really good. How about yourself? Yes, I'm very well, very, very well. Um, Apologies, as you can see, I'm in my vehicle. I'm in my I, car I'm saying, again. Now that lockdown's not on. He's just like I, I'm just viewing houses, man. I'm just like uh, uh, every day. Yeah. He's just viewing houses. Every time I ring yes. him, how are you doing? I'm viewing houses. I'm viewing houses. I yeah. think I'm, really I'm, like, I'm just getting out there, mate. Just getting out there. It's interesting because I was just speaking to an estate agent, and he was telling me that um, the markets are really starting to move at the minute. They're getting a lot of interest. Like for instance, they put a property on the market on Monday. They had eight viewings on Tuesday. They had an offer by the end of Tuesday, offer accepted. And like, they're selling. Houses are selling. So That's good. That's good. Good time, good time. You just want to drive your Porsche, don't you? That's what you want to do. Uh, it's actually really uncomfortable at the minute because it's very hot because I've got to have the engine off so you, can, you guys can hear me. So I might have to turn the engine on in a minute. But, no, no. Um, you, you suffer and sweat. You should have, you should have been at home when, when, when we were due to make the call. I rang him every week, every Friday now. That's, like, no, not every Friday, but the last three Fridays. Kind of has been. <laughs> I've been like, dude, podcast time. He's like, oh, no. It's, yeah. Well, that's technically what, what me, not guys. If it wasn't for me, this podcast wouldn't be happening. It would just be weeks. I know. Weeks. So you know, just anyway, like, what have you been up to? You're looking a bit slimmer, dude. I, I am, I am. I've lost 18 pounds now. Oh, wow! So that's quite cool. yeah, it's been quite well. I went for a run Good this job, morning man. and for a nice five, far? Five, eight, five and a half K. Oh, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't, I don't know how you do it. I it's really can't run. Okay, I hate running, I really cannot run. So I did four and a half K on Monday, five and a half K today. I did six K last week. I was sticking around about that, but it's, it's you know what? It's easy because I've been doing all this hit training, and it's yeah. like at least when I'm running, at least I'm not doing chest to 20 chest to floor burpees and then a 10 second break and then doing it again and then a 10 second break. And do, you know, running is just it feels so easy now, which is does nice. it? Yeah, yeah, so, I, I just struggle with running, so no, I don't want to come with you for a run. I knew that was, I knew you were about to say that. You're about, I, I said you were about to say, Do you want to come with me? No, I don't. Oh, fair enough, so, fair enough, right? Okay, so. Very, um, do you know what's really interesting about this story? We're talking about Lord Sugar and um, yeah. is he, has, he, has he lied about Samuel Lewis? What's really interesting about this story is I, rem- I actually was, I wasn't there as in there on the day, but I remember the whole, the lead up to it. Obviously, mm-hmm. I remember Samuel talking about it. I remember him going on it. I remember him coming back and talking about it. Um, so seeing the stuff going around, but about Samuel in general, I'm really glad that he's decided to start um, to start responding to some of this stuff because there's a lot. I mean, it's <coughs> easy to take the moral high ground, isn't it? And just to think, yeah, let them think what they want. But you know, that's the tra- traditional advice, isn't it? Say nothing, say nothing. But sometimes, sometimes you have got to put the facts straight. So I'm looking forward to, to the videos. I thought the Joe Lice it was. Yeah, I, but, I, I agree. But let's just quickly set the context then with the Lord Sugar one. So Samuel, um, to, to, there's, a, there's a bit, even a bit more to it. Than that we can sort of go into. So Samuel went to this. Um, oh, how should we? How should we tell this? How should we tell this? Do we go through for the facts, or do we leave it a bit in suspense and then reveal the facts later? Let's leave the suspense. So a story comes out. The guy called Raf, I think his name was. Um, a guy called Raf put out this this video saying that Samuel lied about being mentored or having business advice from Lord Sugar. Yeah, and he actually had Lord Sugar on the video saying Samuel did not receive uh, business advice or mentorship by me. It's complete fantasy. Samuel's just responded to that yesterday, so I'm going to put that video on now in case you've missed it. So, guys, check out that video right now, and then we'll tell you what we think. I don't know Samuel Leeds. Hey, what's up? My name's Samuel Leeds. I'm a property investor, and in this video, I'm going to be addressing some of the controversy that's been picked up around the newspapers and TV between myself and Lord Sugar. So, here's the big question. Is it true that I pretended to have met with Lord Sugar and received a business advice or a mentoring session with him, 
Or was it in fact a complete big lie? And really did I just get a cheeky photograph with him following a brief meet and greet? Which is what he says. So let me first just give a little bit of background to this. I have always been an admirer of Lord Sugar. I love The Apprentice Show. I also, the fact that he's got such a massive property portfolio and he's a TV star. I mean, who wouldn't want to sit with Lord Sugar and pick his brain for an hour or so and have some business advice? I certainly did. So much so that I paid £4,800 for just one hour of his time where myself, Lord Sugar, and four other businesses sat around a round table and we all discussed business with Lord Sugar. He answered business questions, gave business advice to each person around the room, which lasted for just over one hour. It was a great session. I took a picture with him, I posted it. I said, great to have a mentoring session with Lord Sugar. In fact, other people around the table did the same thing because we were, number one, I wanted to honor Lord Sugar because if I've received help from somebody, whether that be a mentor, whether that be a friend, I'm always gonna talk well of them, I'm always gonna say that they've helped me, in the same way that hopefully if you've received help from me and if you've liked my videos, maybe you see me as a mentor, then I would love hearing you, you tell that and I'd love to be part of your story. There was a guy sat next to me called Sam and Sam made the newspapers and it said this person had received business advice from Lord Sugar. The same business session, the same mentoring session, whatever you wanna call it, that I had had with Lord Sugar. However, dun dun dun, Lord Sugar made a video about me saying that he didn't know who I was and he had never given me business advice and that it was not true, it was a complete fantasy. I don't know Samuel Leeds. I met him briefly at a conference a few years ago and he claims that I have given him business advice and mentored him are pure fantasy and completely untrue. This was picked up by Channel 4 TV. This went in the Sun newspaper. And to be quite honest, I was a little bit surprised to see it because I had received business advice from Lord Sugar. I've got the payment slips, £4,800 proving this. I've got the email thread proving that I booked a business roundtable session with Lord Sugar through Seriously Fun Business. Charlotte now emailed me saying, when it's not gonna to be too structured, we need to allow time for people to ask questions relevant to their business. It was a business advice session. So, I then gave this back to the Sun newspaper. The Sun added and changed their story a little bit. Thank you, Sun newspaper. Channel 4 recently talked about it. Everyone's been going crazy about it. And since putting the evidence out there by the Sun newspaper, people are now accusing me of, well, it wasn't mentoring though. Listen, listen. I'm sorry if I gave anybody the wrong idea and acted like me and Lord Sugar were like best buddies, but that's never what I said. What I said is that I'd paid for mentoring from Lord Sugar. We had a session and a business advice session together. But why is it that me and another person, we had the same business advice session. The other person called Sam made the newspapers and it was headlined that he had had business advice from Lord Sugar. But me, who'd had the same business advice, was in the newspapers saying that I hadn't had business advice and that I'm a liar. By the way, Lord Sugar, if it never happened, maybe you could just refund me the £4,800 and I'll give that to charity, if it was just a meet and greet. But anyway, I don't know about you, but I think there's probably a little bit of an agenda going on where the media are trying to make me look bad and trying to discredit me, but it doesn't matter. Everything that Lord Sugar taught me in our business advice session that I paid £4,800 for, everything that he taught me, I have put together into a training manual. And it's really good because he taught me a lot. And I paid £4,800 for it, which I was happy with. I would like to offer you the same opportunity where you can pay £4,800 and I'll pass on all the information that he gave me, which helped me become a multi, multi millionaire. Now for you right now, I'm gonna do a very, very special offer because you're watching this and maybe you've seen this because you saw all the Lord Sugar stuff. Maybe Lord Sugar bought you here. But if you're watching this because you saw the Lord Sugar stuff, you can actually, there's a discount code, there's a coupon code. If you put sugar in the discount code, you'll get it for free, okay? So below in the description, in the link, there's a little link, you can click on it, that it will say 4,800 pounds, but that will drop to zero when you put sugar in the coupon code and you can get all the same advice that he gave me for free. Okay, so that was the, I mean, uh, I think it kind of 
pretty conclusively um, answers answers any of the critics or the speculation. Mike, what, what did you think of the video? It, it's it's factual based, isn't it? Like, how can how can somebody deny something that we've got factual evidence of? Now, what a lot of people are are saying that it all comes down to the the definition of the word mentoring. That's yeah. what they're saying. Okay. Now, generally, that definition can be taken as to mean certain different things by certain different age groups. Like an older person, such I as Alan Sugar, I Lord us. I saw someone saying this uh, about how, how different age groups, but I'd, I'd never sort of heard that, heard that before. When I Googled... Yeah, no, no, like generally the older generation, such as Lord Sugar, um, might define it as a long-term arrangement, whereas um, the younger generation, it's maybe not so much. However, look, I've just dictionary. gone straight on onto the dictionary on, on Google. I've just Googled the definition of mentoring. And here it is. It's, it is to advise or train somebody, yeah. especially a younger colleague. So that's exactly what Samuel got. Yeah. He got a, advice about business and guidance on how to guide and how to direct his business. It's exactly yeah. what he got. So, like, it's just, look, you're never going to convince the people... <laughs> You're never going to convince the people that don't want to be convinced. You're always going to convince the, pe- the people that, 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 that believe Samuel's lying will always believe he's lying. doesn't yeah. matter what evidence he puts out there to defute that, they will, or to dispute that, they will always find a way around it to say, well, he's just twisting words. He's doing that. He's doing that. Come, just grow up, move on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear. I mean, I actually remember it at the time as well, which is what I was saying. I wasn't there on the day, but I remember the lead-up, which I remember in booking, I remember him talking about <laughs> it. Um, so, obviously, he paid, clearly paid the £4,800 to go to, to, to the conference. It was just over an hour, boardroom table, which is what Samuel said, to be fair. Samuel never came out and said, Lord Sugar's been my long-term mentor and has worked with me for many years. No, he's never. He never said that. Every time... Every time I've heard Samuel mention it, this is from my experience and my actual being there listening to the words coming out of his mouth, he's always told it as it was. He paid to meet Lord Alan Sugar and they spent about an hour, hour and a half together and he got advice about his business. That's it. That's all he's ever said. He never said they were friends. He's never said that they were doing, they were doing collabs or they were doing joint ventures or anything like that. All he's ever said is, I went to an event spent about an hour and a half in presence with a group of other people. We all got opportunities to ask questions and to get guidance and business advice about our business. Mm-hmm. Like Google defined that as, as could be could be defined as men- mentoring, which which it is. Yeah. It's like, come on man. Not all mentoring has to be over a long period. I love the fact that he um, that he's put together it's actually have you have you read the manual yet? Do you know the, the, the free manual with the Lord Sugar? I've not, I've really not actually, but I'll, I should. No, I downloaded it. It's actually, it's actually pretty interesting. It's, pretty, it's one of those things, and I think tra- this is very much a case of when I go on any sort of training or pay any yeah. what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, for some golden nuggets. I'm looking for some, some pearls of wisdom. I, doesn't have to, I don't want someone, if I'm paying someone to give me advice, I don't want them to hold me account, spend ages holding me accountable, be there to answer my calls, and tell me exactly what to do. I want to say, this is what I'm doing. This yeah, is my what plan. What do you think? How can I tweak it? And Because the thing yeah. is, you know, when they say that when an airplane takes off, if you move it by a couple of degrees, it yeah. will end up in a different city. So just a tiny bit of a tiny bit of adjustment. If you're going to take massive action, so if you're getting adjusted like this and you're not going to do anything, if you've got yeah, the plane that. on the airport and you're just moving it, but then you don't take any action, then and the plane doesn't yeah. fly off, then it's irrelevant. It makes no difference. Yeah. But if you're going to take massive action and you've got someone that can come in and give you a couple of golden nuggets, there was there was two main points in the in the article that Lord Sugar sort of shared with Samuel um, during that time. And you might you might think I think anyone reading it would think probably I would not be happy if I paid, although it's really good, I wouldn't be happy if I paid £4,800 for that amount of advice. Yeah, but, but it, listen, listen, this comes down to people's expectations yeah. because, go on, I'll let you finish before I interrupt you. I was going to say, but, but the thing is, is that I would be, because I know I'd be happy to pay, you know, we paid Grant Cardone a lot of money and he's been 
really useful because you can say, this is what I'm going through, so I'm doing, and he can go, ah, and you're getting the advice of someone who's really successful, been there and done it, and Lord Sugar has. I mean, I don't know why he is... Uh, I don't it's clear, he's listen, finding, he, but... he's been... He's been uh, he's basically, he's trying to distance himself. He's, he's clearly trying to distance himself from it, and he's been, I, I believe, he's been... Um, coerced into doing this by that Raf guy. What was it? Is it Raf? Um, Raf. That guy is it. clearly, it's clearly scripted. Like, clearly. Like, he's saying it while reading, but he's like, I do not. It's clearly a script that he's been yeah. told to say. And I, I personally thought he would, he, I've always admired him, and I still do. I admire the guy. I think he's a, an amazing guy. I've followed his journey. I've followed his businesses. Um, but I just, I was, I found it bizarre that he says, I get okay. I get it. He might he might not remember Samuel. He might see lots of people, but to point blank say that you never gave Samuel business advice or business training is just it's just not true. Yeah. Um, so it's just that's that's my opinion. Like when we've got evidence, or, or not me, when Samuel's got evidence that he, he did. The thing is, but suppose, you'll never please suppose. these people. That's the thing. Not Lord, you'll never please these people that are saying that Samuel's lying. Because no, no matter what you no matter what you do. You'll never please them because they're not there to be pleased. They're there to cause fucking problems. And at the end of the day, that's how these people are. They're like that in every aspect of their life. And I, listen, I, I know many people that have been on the tail end of what these people do. And they, they're ruining, the, they're, they're trying to ruin the reputation and the, 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 the work of very good people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, just grow up. Get a life. Focus your energies on, on good stuff and not just trying to ruin people. Like, come on, man. I, th I think the thing is, is that you could look at it and go, why is Lord Sugar getting involved? And why, why was Joe Lysett getting involved? And, what? and I think the, thing is, the, the actual truth is, there's, there's like a couple of absolute losers who've got nothing better yeah. to do than to try and spend their whole lives <laughs> drumming up hate trying to find it. It's very interesting, people like Property Tribes, for example. Very interesting that when Samuel put up his post, they pause their thread and they're like, oh, yeah. no, no comments. And they're, and they're just going for negativity. And why are they doing it? What To boost their platform, because they know it gets views, it gets people talking. It's the same as Raf. You know, Raf puts his... Well, all, all you got to do is look at his most popular videos. Well, back before we started talking about Samuel, it was like 200 views, 200 views. Then he just sat 20,000 views. You can see it. It's just like, okay, I think we know what's going on here. So it's but I think all these people, all these people that are suddenly doing an expose on Samuel, they're only doing it because they know that's going to generate traffic to their YouTube channel. You yeah. wait, they'll all come out in the next couple of months, six months a year. They'll all come out with that magical course that they've got. They'll all come out with some sort of training program that they're trying to sell. They're using it to try and build an audience. That's all they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the, the, most of it, like Joe likes it. Like it is, it was actually laughable. It was, it was actually hilarious to watch. Like, he's a funny guy, but like he knows nothing about property. But no. what he's doing is he's trying to pull at the strings of consumers, saying, "Oh, this big evil guy is scamming people." But they didn't once interview anybody that actually has done incredibly well off the training. They yeah. didn't actually. There's no balance to it. Mm. Is there unhappy customers? Yes. But there's more, there's more happy than unhappy. Oh, and well, the problem is, Joe Lysett come along with his, his sort of very camp, laughable, ooh, take on, on right move or take on Samuel. It's just nonsensical. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not, there's no logic to it. He's done well, that purely as a no piss game. That's it. Credibility when he said he didn't know what financial freedom meant. He was like, oh dear. Uh, you know, but he, he just, he, Go, he's lost. I think he's lost. Yeah. One, if you want to be funny, I'm sh go to Joe because he is funny. And and to be fair, even during the that episode, there were those things that made me laugh. I do think he's quite funny. The, the funniest thing he's ever done is the car. Have you seen the car park? The the car park. Oh, wait. Where he, no, no, I've not. No. Where he got a parking fine? Have you not seen that? No. That's the funniest thing he's ever. I think that's what made him. To be fair, a few years ago, really funny, really really funny clip. Uh, about how we got out of a parking ticket, you'd like it. But Joe's funny. Really but like, he doesn't know it. But to be fair, to be fair to Joe, people like Joe is he, again. He's just a pawn. He's just he's just getting the thing. Is, he, he is a pawn. You're bang on right because 
he's been contacted by these losers. We know who they are. Complete and utter broke losers who will never do anything in their life. And what, what's happened is he's been contacted by them and they've just gone with this story. And all they've done is they've got all of their evidence from this particular group, okay? And they've pulled a couple of one-star trust pilot reviews off and they've just screenshotted them. Fine. But what company is successful and helping hundreds and hundreds, if not like thousands and thousands of people having got a bad review? And we proved, or Samuel proved in the video that most people are doing fake reviews. They're doing reviews of a review. There's even one guy, Darren Summers, right? He done a fake review. He then went onto a group and said, oh, it's funny, I've just left this review, but I've never even been or even met the guy. And then afterwards, in the comments of Samuel's YouTube video, he done a comment saying, yeah, hold my hands up, that was me. It's like, come on, how, what, what? How dumb are that you? Once. That's been happening for months. Let's bring the let's bring his score down. Everyone, come on, team. We can go. It's like, come on, guys. Come on. How loose yes. can you be? Well, that you, you don't see any successful people trying to bring like like successful people don't try and spend in their time trying to bring others down. I know it's it's of course it's, like the only people that ever spend this sort of time doing this sort of stuff are people that have got nothing in their life. They've clearly got nothing in their life. Like Come on, man! Sort your own life out. Worry about your life and not trying, like, not trying to. Oh, just so let's have a look down. at. Let's have a little look at because obviously there's been a, a heck of a lot of support for. Uh, here you go for Samuel on the video. Um, so yeah. What, let's see what people are saying, and then we'll look at what Lord Sugar said because he has, he has. Uh, well, he hasn't personally, but his PR team probably the ones that made him read the. Uh, the <laughs> in the first place. Um, uh, when Big Al watches this, I wonder if he'll be angry or smile. Genius moves by Samuel there. He couldn't spend 4000 that inch on marketing he's got for free here. Schoolboy error from Alan. Touche, Samuel. Keep doing what you're doing. Let the haters hate. Watched every one of your videos over the years. Got into property. Now my portfolio is seven figures and growing. Also watched all of Alan's shows too. So credit where credit is due. Uh, it's kind of what we're saying. Obviously, you know, he, uh, we, we like Alan's show. Of course we do. Um, <laughs> Like, Hopefully, the Twitch so much, is like... now over. The sugar discount code, lol. That was that was pretty funny. That was pretty. Yeah. Funny. I wasn't expecting this at the end. Straight savage. <laughs> um, well, look, funny. I think it's it's perfect marketing. Lol. I thought I was gonna have something bad to say, but this is literally gold. Ha ha. Um, yeah. Ha ha. Effing great. Good on you, Sam. You can't argue with the facts. Lol. I don't understand all the hate against you. Definitely some sort of agenda. It's just you know, great response. Facts don't lie. Everyone, everyone's loving it. So let's see what let's see what Sugar has to say because he is like I say, his PR team has responded. Uh, I'm sure they've been pressed into it by. Um, wow, well, uh, old, old uh, Vanessa Warwick's been been at uh, been at them, isn't she? So she's been uh, trying to put her vindictiveness into people. There you go. So here you go. Here's it's the, interesting. It's and interesting we'll, that. But, um, like PT, like property tribes, obviously they allow so much. Like they, they go on about truth, but they allow so many lies to just. Oh, they're out. the biggest hypocrites like, I've ever I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, Lord Sugar stands by his comments and would encourage consumers to do their own research online in order to form their own opinion. Well, when he says research online, what does that? He stands by his comments. What more research can can you do online? Stands by his. He stands by his comment. I don't, I don't understand how he can say that, do you? He stands by his comments. I did not give Samuel Lee's business advice. It's clearly proven that that's not true. Mind you, yeah. what can he say? Can he literally come out and say, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's not his style, is it? It's not his style. Yeah, but look, I'm sure this is... Is that Samuel Leeds has been deliberately misleading consumers in order to build his credibility and sell courses. What would you say to that? Doesn't matter what I want to say to it. It really doesn't matter, does it? Because... People will believe what they want to believe, which uh, um, I, I don't necessarily believe that. Samuel credits people. Um, when Samuel learns off somebody, he credits them, um, which and there's Samuel, nothing wrong with. And Samuel paid Lord Sugar for advice, which he's used for his own business, which you can see in the book if you want to download the book. We'll put a link under our video as well. So I, I, I think Samuel that... Always it's nonsense. It's Samuel always, sorry, sorry. Samuel always credits people that he learns from, and if he learns a, a specific skill or something, he'll credit them 
for helping him. Like, I've never heard Samuel say, oh, you mean Lord Sugar? We're like besties. Um, I've never heard that. It's just, come on. Yeah. Here you go. Next bit. He's already been forced, and this is the bit. This is the bit that hasn't been talked about yet. So we obviously know we can get onto this. He's already been forced to remove marketing materials which contained fake quotes and endorsements from Lord Sugar, yet still continues to imply he's been mentored by Sugar as a way of encouraging people to sign up his course. Okay, so a few things I want to talk about here. First of all, the, uh, uh, when Samuel first went on the business advice training and stuff, yeah. Um, Lord Sugar, during their back and forth, and Samuel, he said a couple of nice things about Samuel, which Samuel yeah. published on social media at the time. Um, and he put out yeah. there and he said, oh, Lord Sugar, Lord Sugar says this. Now, within no time, Lord Sugar's solicitors and stuff, because I don't think he's like, he's allowed to just endorse people. I think, you know, yeah. when you get to a certain level, I remember when I, uh, working with certain celebrities and stuff and them saying, I can't publicly endorse you or whatever so yeah. Sam probably should have asked permission to be fair uh, but Samuel put it up because he, he did say it and Lord Sugar's sister said you Lord Sugar will not publicly endorse you please take that down otherwise we're going to sue you and okay Samuel being I don't know how old he would have been at the time probably about 24 25 kind of age and he was like I remember him telling me at the time he's like and I, and I was like dude just take it down you, you yeah, do yeah. not want to get into a law into into a legal battle with Lord Sugar, this was so so. He, he, he just he took it down. Now people have been mentioning that I've seen. On, they're like, ah, what about this? He took this down. Yeah, Lord Sugar. Say it. It's not a false quote, but we. But Samuel did take it down because he got threatened. <laughs> he got threatened. It wasn't worth it. What's the point in keeping it up when you're being threatened? So yeah, I don't, I don't really see what the, what the dealio is on that. But and there you well, go. It's just more. It's just more gossip, isn't it? It's more gossip that the 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 the, 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 the people just want to. It's just more fuel. More fuel. Yeah, to the fire. yeah, yeah. Because people are mentioning that now, like, oh, what about this? Well, yeah, Lord Sugar did say it. Well, we can't use it for marketing because he said he won't publicly endorse us. Yeah. So, End of. Lord Sugar stands by his video and also points out the program on Channel Four last week, as well as numerous other national news articles. I think there's one. Um, where yeah, people good. should be able to form their own opinion of the person, of this person. Uh, I think there's one, and I think they even changed their article. Do you know the Scot the the, uh, the Scottish Sun? They changed their article to include the information that's well once uh, once they put it out there. So oh, okay. I think that's pretty weak, Sugar. Do you would you say? I'm mean, got to be careful here how we word it because I don't want to get Lord Sugar's legal team. But would you say that he was telling Porkies? Uh, no comment. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to comment on it. At the end of the day, um, we've got. We've, <laughs> it's, it's pretty evident where the proof lies. Um, what more can we say about it? Well, maybe we're not going to say, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Comment below. Was Lord Sugar telling telling Porkies about Samuel Leeds, and why does he continue to stick to the same story when all the evidence points to the contrary? It's now time for this. Okay, so it's question and answer time. You ask questions and we do our very best to answer them. So what questions have we got today, LA boy? All right. Okay, so earlier on, I done a Facebook Live, put it on Property Investors with Samuel Leeds Group, and I have several questions. So bear in mind, next time you do filming, that's where I'll be doing it, and you have to put your questions in there. So I have a question here from Sid Nahal. Uh, okay, love your show and the banter you guys have. Thank you, brother. Uh, just wanted to know if you didn't run your own training company, which other UK training would you attend and why? Keep up the great content, uh, guys. Keep up the great content you guys produce. So, if we didn't do our own training, who's who other train? What other training program would we attend? Ooh, if I didn't do well, I actually do attend training. So, I mean, I can. So I do as well. So the last the last training that I, I did was with Grant Cardone. So I definitely yeah. I definitely would <laughs> would attend his training. Probably not for if I was for UK property investing, I, I wouldn't. But for yeah. um, but for business advice and sales advice and and just investing in general, yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd 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 have to go for Grant on that. Grant Cardone. How about you? I actually believe the best uh, training course I've done. Um, 
that's not property related uh, would, have, would, would have been MMI, uh, Millionaire Mind Intensive, but then also the uh, Train the Trainer and Making the Stage programs, yep. um, which, which were basically speaking training programs. And I went out to India. I went out to Germany for train training, and then I went out to India for making the stage. And they were like, yeah, massive eye openers, uh, completely life changing training programs. But they're not business. They're not property related. They're, they're more personal development um, and, and speaker training. So yeah, that's what I would do. Um, okay, next, and this is from Matt Herford. Hey guys, is bridging finance only used for the value of the property or can they also be used for development refurb costs as well? Um, okay, so you can actually use bridging for, uh, bridging's used to purchase and then you have development finance for the, the refurb at the end of it. Now it's very subjective to the, 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 the GDB, the done up value of the property, whether or not you'll get approved for development finance as well as the bridging finance. The best thing, you know, speak to a whole of market independent um, finance broker who can advise you the best options. Um, so find a, find a deal, go to them, tell them this is a deal, this is me, I want to finance it, what's the best way you recommend? Um, that's all I'd say. But yeah, bridging finance is great, but you also have to, um, the bridges for the purchase and then development finance for the, for the reform. But you can get packages where they give you all, I mean, you can even get packages where they give yeah. you bridging, the development and they agree to give you the mortgage at the end, can't you? So yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, it's all much of a muchness, but yeah, <laughs> technically bridging is just for the, it's just for the property. Uh, Joel Caswell says, how do you stack up a deal? Okay. So basically stacking a deal means you're doing your ROI on a deal. Uh, so you're doing ROI? ROI and your, your return on investment and your due diligence. Okay. So when I say stack a deal, I'm just making sure that it is a good deal and it will work as I expect it to work. Things like checking the rental demand, checking the valuations, checking that the done up value will be good, um, checking that, that what's going on in the area, knowing what's happening nearby, um, having a really good understanding of what the area is like, what type of tenants you're going to get, what's the average rental income, what's the ceiling price for the rental income, what's the ceiling price for values in that area, uh, things like that. So that's basically a lot, and it's just documenting all of that. But the reason you need to know that is because you need to make sure that you, because you, you need to know what you could rent it out for and whether you're going to be able to rent it out and all that sort of stuff. So you do all your due diligence, but really what you need to know is A, how much money are you going to put in right now to the deal? So for your yep. legal, for your stamp duty, for your deposit, how much money am I putting in the deal versus how much money, and, and not just money, actually profit, how much yeah. profit am I going to be getting paid every month? And then you work out how much profit you're going to make over the first year versus how much money you're putting in to work out your, your ROI. So that's kind of how you yeah. stack a deal. But Alistair is completely correct. You need to know all, do you due diligence on the area, et cetera, first? Because it might be that you look at it and go, oh, that would rent out for 600 quid. But if you don't do any due diligence and you realize you've rented it in an absolute crap hole that won't rent out for, for 300 quid, then you, your figures might be wrong. So yeah, hope that answers your question, Joel. And Fabio has got a question for you, Alistair. This is direct for you, my friend. Okay, go on. Are you ready for your question? <laughs> Ready, go. How can I get a job working for your sourcing business? Ah, good question. Um, I've actually, on my YouTube channel, I've just done a, a video about questions and answers. People ask me lots of questions, and I get this question every single week. Like, seriously, four or five times a week. Um, the, the question is, normally, if I come and work for you for free, can you train me, or how can I get a job working for you? The reality is uh, we don't take anybody on, on any sort of scholarship, any sort of training program. Um, we I have limited... Huh? I think you should. I yeah. Think, I think you should offer like, an, a, a, like, a, 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 like a, re, a real a real life 12-month deal sourcing training deal. And from your point of view, you get free workers or even they pay to work for you for the, for the year. From their point of view, maybe 12 months is too long. Maybe they won't want to do it for 12 months. But from their well, point of view, they get would, all the knowledge and experience. Like, oh, if, I was get, if I was 17, 18, I would be like begging you, begging yeah. you to let me do that. Yeah, the, 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 the problem is uh, we'd have to charge for it because it's like a business. We're, treat, we're teaching them a business, so we, I would never do it for free. Um, right. So i just wouldn't i would charge for it so we do have I, I do have opportunities for people to come alongside and they, they can they can get like a franchised sort of 
licensed area where we'll <laughs> sell. Yeah, we've got about five people doing it, um, but we don't want many more. We probably only want probably 10 maximum, but it's not something that I, I actively sell or I actively look I for. Didn't, I didn't even know, so obviously. Yeah, but it's just people come on board now and again. We work with them for six months. We help them sell deals. They bring us deals. We, we, give, we share the, the profit with them. Um, but obviously, they have to invest for that. So uh, anyone that wants to do that, let me know. But it, it's a very, it's, it, it, it is not a case of, I'm coming to do it. I've got the money I want to do it. It is really not. I have to like you, basically. And I have to know that you are actually going to do what you've got to do. That to makes get sense. What That's what you've never offered it me, isn't it? Because you don't, you yeah. know. You like you have to like that. That's that's me. Bang, ruled it out. Yeah, like you're out. You're out. No, it's just I'm really picky with who I do because I know how hard this business is. The the, the the steps are easy, but a lot of people aren't really prepared to do to to take the required action. Like me, I'm filming this at the side of the road because I'm in between viewings. Uh, I've, I've I've had like six viewings today. I've got uh, four or five yesterday, and I've got some more next Monday, Tuesday. And I'm I'm prepared to do lots of viewings, even though. Like, I don't really need to, um, but I still am. So that's how. Awesome, man. All right. Well, thanks, guys, ever so much for watching the show. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment below your thoughts. We look forward to seeing you next week. And um, share, share the video, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, guys. See you later.